what we are looking at is a notebook that is over a hundred years old. It's from 1913. This is music that was collected from the Ukraine and Belarus before World War I and has miraculously survived to the present day. This project, Kieselgoff Mankanovetsky Digital Manuscript Project, has been able to scan these uh, documents, which are music notebooks, and they are preserved now. And we are a volunteer team internationally is doing research to notate this into digital notation. So I joined the project and this is the first song that I picked because it looked easy <laughs> and it's an adventure. Um, this is the um, notation, the number that's assigned to the catalog. Um, the red is probably written by Moshe Beragovsky when he had access to this notebook and there's a red V here, which I'm not sure exactly what it means. But in Beragovsky's catalog, which I have here. Here is his entry for this song. So this is the word Freilachs and then a question mark. He wasn't sure if it was really Freilachs or it was something else. And this is Lerner Yehezkiel, age 47, and Baal Tefila. That means he's a prayer leader. And I'm not sure what the other things here are, but uh, this is his note, 385 is his catalog number. Heft, the notebook number is 36 from Kieselgoff and page 65. So we have access to Beragovsky's notes here. So what we have now are scans of the, um, of the pages in several formats. So what we're looking at here is the actual preservation high res scans that were done uh, when the people had access to scan these manuscripts under this. Uh, it, okay, so the copyright is the Verdansky National Library of the Ukraine. So um, everything that is derived from this carries this copyright and a Creative Commons uh, BY40 license, which is a share alike license, I believe. So, um, there's no clef, there's a key signature, it's G minor. So this was recorded on a wax cylinder and um, Yehikiel Lerner, or whoever uh, sang it, <laughs> sang this song. And um, I've found other examples of songs that, that were actually where you could actually hear the wax cylinder on a site at the Verdansky Library in the Ukraine. So this site, audio.ipri.kiev.ua, which is the Ukraine, is the um, CDs of the wax cylinders. And it is fascinating. Um, you can take, uh, you can go into these and copy this text and go to Google Translate and see what it means. Paste it in here and it'll detect that it's Ukrainian and uh, give you a translation. So the collection includes 1,017 wax phono cylinders and music text transcripts, uh, just an amazing collection that survived all these years. So this has samples of, um, this is an overview CD so these CDs can be purchased. Uh, yeah, there is an email address if you want to purchase these CDs. So what I was fascinated to find is volume four, and I actually found wax cylinders performed by Yechiel Lerner and in Kremenets, that's his town in the Volyn province of the Ukraine. I believe it's the Northwest, and it has a cylinder number so Zinovi Kieselgoff led the expedition in 1913, and I'm just going to play a few seconds. So isn't that amazing? I could actually hear this man 
who is the prayer leader performing over a hundred years later. So what we're doing now is we have these access files which are used, uh, available for the people digitizing the notes. And uh, you can see some lyrics here. Yay, da, 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 da. <laughs> so there's a number 127. Now I'm not sure if this is Kieselgoff's number or Beragovsky's number, but there's a word here which looks like a volek, which would be a waltz. And it's in three-quarter time, so I believe that this is really a volek, but it's written freilachs, which is like a generic Jewish wedding dance. So that's why Beragovsky probably had a question about it. Now, some of these notebooks have been gone through an enhanced scan, so this preservation has been enhanced with enhanced contrast, and here you can see um, a lot clearer the actual title and certain details like the stems of notes that may be too light. There may be uh, things that are unclear that can come up in the high contrast scan. This is a demonstration of my process for starting the digitization of these scores. So this is a Korg nano key. It's a MIDI keyboard hooked up via USB to a Microsoft Surface. Any laptop is fine, but I'm running a custom Java program which will record what I play. And all I'm doing is recording the notes. Okay, so this is just a demo, but see it's using a B flat and a C. B E S is um, the notation for flat, uh, E S and I S for sharps. Okay, but that's uh, so that I can copy that text into Lily Pond. Okay, so after I have completed editing the text file for Lily Pond, um, just using normal Lily Pond notation, um, after adding durations to the notes and the uh, repeat groupings, um, then this is what it, you would get when you compile it in Lily Pond. This will typeset the file in Lily Pond. Okay. And uh, this is all I want to do in Lily Pond. Um, just to capture the basics of the score, the notes and durations. Okay, now what I'm going to do is something that's new to Lily Pond, which allows you to export to Music XML. So I've set up a directory with two packages that I downloaded from GitHub, and I um, add right after the version these commands to include a package, load a package, and set an option for exporting to Music XML. And then in the score layout, I copy this command to export the file using the options so that it'll create Music XML. So I save that file and recompile it. Okay, so you could ignore the errors there. But now it has created an XML file called demo.xml. And then I can do an open with muse score. And I don't want to apply Edwin. And now I have a file that I can work with in MuseScore. So I do the rest of the typesetting, but this saves a lot of time because it gives me all the notation. Okay, so I could change the key signature here. So this is the final score that I produced with MuseScore. 
So I added the copyright notice, um, the notes as I was interpreting the written notation, anything that stood out to me that I didn't understand or anything that I changed. For example, a written repeat, which I wrote out instead of using the repeat sign. So um, this is now available for study. It's an accurate representation of the written score in the notebook. And then I also used the same lily pond file to create a bandstand score. So here is an example of a B-flat lead sheet for a clarinet. So this was done in lily pond where I took the same notation and just added the chords and the repeats and uh, put some accents where I wanted them. And I added an extra repeat at the end. So that's my uh, de derivative work. It's still under Creative Commons, and the copyright is still owned by the Vernadsky National Library of Ukraine. So this is a derivative work. So I called it Learner's Freilach because um, when I digitize the score, I have the first dibs at naming rights.